when JME announced that he was releasing his future projects in, in, in January only on physicals, this made my day. This was very powerful. This was very important for the art, for the culture itself, and for the music business, really, because it reminded me that artists, there are artists out there that do not like to be raped. Hello, Internet. Welcome back to the to Statistic Pod, the place that I try to articulate my thoughts in 20 minutes or less. And I go by the name of DJ T. So, the man with glasses for space used on Earth. Now, today's topic is going to be talking about my decision to leave Spotify. I made this decision back in um back back last year sometime last year it was in december i believe i just couldn't handle it anymore i just i, I, I just couldn't bother because i was finding myself less and less on there when i started buying more and more music so i uh i just thought what's the point i mean when i went on there i went on to play the music that i already owned anyway and um which was actually when when you look when you when i look back on it in hindsight it was actually kind of a bit of waste of the app because it wasn't actually created for that. It was created so that you actually find music that you are not really exposed to. So I guess it was a, a waste of an app for me, if that makes sense. But that's not really the reason or the motivation why I actually deleted it. I wasn't using the app like that before. I mean, before I actually unsubscribed, um, I was actually using the app a lot to just make playlists for my mix show cell jam which which you should definitely tune into for the mix show that's what i usually did the the tracks that i play because i only pick 20 tracks and they and i can't repeat these tracks again i tend to put this into the the uh, spotify uh, playlist and then it was there for people to go and listen to should uh, every week really so when i did that um that was the main reason for me doing that I listen to other people's playlists, but again, I tend to find that I was reverting back to my old playlist. When you think about it, it's more of something to do with my, me as a DJ as well, because the only reason I look for new music is because of my job. I, I mean, and obviously, of course, now my passion for hip hop has, has grew. So I guess I am looking for more and more new music as well because of that as well, because I want to hear what these guys have to talk about. Uh, but that's within my DJ vicinity I, I doubt i would be doing that if i wasn't a dj honestly i think i'll be one of these guys that would uh if i like a song i will make a playlist of it and then i'll, I'll listen to that place over and over again I'm kind of made to collect what i like you know what i mean and then have that and listen to that over and over again uh, i think that's what i was on but more to the point when jme announced um announced that he was releasing his future projects in in january uh only on physicals this made my day this was very powerful this was very important for the art for the culture itself and for the music business really because it reminded me that artists there are artists out there that do not like to be raped <laughs> there are artists out there that do not like to be taken advantage of that they have a lot of self-worth and self-respect. I'm not saying that artists don't have these qualities with them. It's just most of them don't exercise it. Uh, and and they, they are very agreeable when it comes to labels. Um, you have your outliers, like, I was, like, like, like I'm talking about today, like your JME. Then you have someone like Nipsey Hussle, for example, who only decided to work with a label when it came to the distribution of his music. But he was always about selling it physically, he even sold a hundred of them for a hundred dollars, which was unheard of. How do you sell a mixtape for a hundred dollars? But that's how much of a loyal fan base he had garnered over time. And that wasn't, that's not because he felt, I need to put my music on Spotify, I need to do this, I need to do that. He garnered that by going out and selling physicals. This is not something that is died out. In fact, physical sales are still high. It's still in their billions. Uh, in, in 2018, BBC, the BBC reported that, that they had, that the physical sales was 2 billion. In, uh, and it, it, it was a, a slight decrease from 10 billion that they made just a couple of years prior. But it's still in the billions, not um, to say the least. And yes, of course, this is a very big, big dip. I think it's an eight million dip. 
nonetheless though it, it still shows that people still do go and buy and buy physicals albeit it's but again it's still not encouraging because uh especially for an artist to look at especially for a label to look at they it's not encouraging to see that decline and it's also not encouraging um it, it's also not encouraging to see that it's only their top tier artists that can really command that much sales so i'm not oblivious to the fact that the way that the method that we consume music now is a lot different however what i am also not oblivious to the fact is artists they have a lot of power and consumers we know this the thing is we know this when Nicki minaj announced her her retirement you don't even need to look at Nicki minaj as an example you can look at frank ocean how much his bass wants him to release music um after blonde he hasn't released anything since he, he, he like when he bothers is when he releases music you don't even have to even that's in the r&b field then you have hip-hop field where we have an act such as j electronica who doesn't even release music let alone a full-length project he doesn't release singles he features in singles now and then when he when he wants to and he's so respected for that however every artist are flocking to hear these guys speak and this is the thing because if these guys were to decide you know what i'm gonna put out only physicals nothing on spotify nothing on anything else just physicals they would sell and that's not even to reflect on and and that contradicts everything that we are seeing in terms of statistic wise as in physical sales declining from eight um from 10 million to eight um to two million the rise of streaming services now spot spotify is like um bankrolling uh, at a 74 percent margin turnover which which is so amazing for a model that it that is only dependent on a subscription of every month at a certain amount soundcloud has also released their profit figures so they, it's not like they're struggling. It, it shows you the growth and the way that the future is, looks to be heading. To go back to my point, for what JME has done, it's really encouraging. It's really nice to see. It's really refreshing to see that there are artists out there that are going to take the re, um, the bull by the horns. They're going to take the cow by the bladder, if that's actually how you say it, by the bladder. That they're going to do something about their career. That they love their music so much that they are going to make it so that you get the uh, the raw listening experience rather than substitute it for a watered down copy because what a lot of what a lot of fans don't know is that streaming is not at the highest quality when you upload to spotify when you upload to soundcloud it is very hard on their bandwidth to actually host that much music at once so they're going to convert your tracks to the lowest quality to even have it be streamed by the public and usually i think it, the last time the figure that i saw was 96 kbps to 128 kbps which isn't great it's not great and but this is the only way it can allow you to actually hear the stream and like you know stream it as quick as possible um so that you get you get to enjoy it now Bandcamp is kind of different because the streaming is at a low quality yes they understand this um for those that don't know Bandcamp is um similar to spotify and and um, soundcloud but the difference is once you buy a track uh you get the options of having it in different formats such as flac WAF, or aif or lossless so when you did when you decide to do download you know it's off their service but you can also stream as well on there i think don't quote me on it but i think they do have a maximum cap on how much you can stream i'm not too sure exactly how much but it's it's a very low quality like you can even hear how low the quality it is but if you like the concepts if you like what they're talking about you can get to buy um but in terms uh but i don't like that model i don't like the fact that um that you 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 stream first before you buy. I I I tend to compare music to grocery shopping. For example, I'm looking at it from the standpoint of right. I go into 
let's say Tesco. Tesco is the is a UK grocery store here. Maybe in different countries you have the, your different grocery stores, but here is Tesco that I go to. And um, when I go to Tesco, if I'm buying a food product, if I'm buying ice cream, for example, I'm going to I'm not exactly gonna pick up the ice cream and lick and run away. Uh, if I look at it, if I pick up the ice cream and I, and I, and I look at it, I'm like, okay, cool. This is this is what I'm getting. It says that it says they're on the tin, just like it says it, it tells you the nutritional information, all those things. It's, it's the same way that that you get a track list on an album that you're gonna hear, or even a track that you're gonna hear. They're gonna give you a, a brief description of what it's about without giving away too much, and then you decide whether you want to buy it or not. I think that's the best way because at least you get to buy it, sample it. And I mean, you can buy it and be like, uh, no, I actually don't like that. And then you never buy it again. And then, or you can actually end up enjoying your purchase and going back and buying it again. I still remember the first time I tried Ben and Jerry's, um, not cookie though, uh, I believe it was peanut butter cup. I was in love. I kept buying peanut butter cup. I bought other variations, but I kept buying peanut, peanut butter cup. And this experience happened again in the music form where I bought, uh, the latest album by Royce of Five Nine, the allegory which I'll be reviewing on this channel. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But I bought the allegory, best listening experience in my entire life. That process alone, I listened to it on WAF Lossless. I bought it on Bandcamp. Um, so and not only did I get the best listening experience, but I can be rest assured that the money that that I that is being that I bought from Bandcamp, obviously Bandcamp do get a, a percentage of that because they're hosting the artist, but the artist is going to get a huge chunk of that money. That's a huge chunk that they may never get because of streaming sales. I mean, let's be honest. Royce of 5 is a big artist, but he's not going to be doing Eminem numbers, if I'm being honest with you. And that is something that is the downside of streaming. I mean, I, I, I guess now is a good time of any to actually say the differences between now and now that i'm out of that bubble now that i'm not using spotify anymore what's actually changed and what's new what's what still remain now the point i was making with this is you don't have to go down the jme route you don't have to go and you know put out and say oh i'm only selling physicals you can actually use the game to your advantage i was actually having this conversation with a couple of friends of mine online on twitter and basically what i was basically trying to say to them as they were opposing the, the idea it was it was, it was quite in it was, it was quite interesting to get their perspective on board and it, it, it definitely brought in my own perspective because both of them were artists within the industry. They work with artists, um, especially with Young Mercs, who is an audio engineer. He works with uh, a lot of artists in, um, in, in perfecting the sound that they've given him and as well as uh, Deja Eagle, who is a UK rapper. So he is the artist himself. So it was quite interesting that to get his perspective and summarizing what he was saying. Those times are gone from where an artist would look to focus on physicals and i can kind of see that as well i can i'm not blind to this fact that those times are actually on their way out because one it does cost money to actually put out physicals i mean you gotta look at the overhead costs on on, on this you gotta look at the cost to actually make the physical all those things are are compounded and it, and it does cost more for an artist so it was quite interesting to get that perspective on it so i can see how streaming is an a really attractive prospect for a foreign artist but my rebuttal to that is mainly that you know i mean there's nothing wrong, wrong with streaming go with it if you must but use the soundcloud as 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 your guide or use the bank model as your guide because both platforms are really about the artist and for the artist soundcloud really made it so that artists can actually be independent um whereas before uh, uh before artists found it very hard to go without a label soundcloud kind of this destroyed that link and um it allowed them to interact with their fans have a personal relationship with their fans where i found that it's not the same with spotify because spotify you only upload and that's it you don't get any feedback from your fans in terms of um on the track feedback for it, like you do on soundcloud so i would my main input on that would mainly to be if you were to upload your song onto uh onto these streaming websites make it so that you you don't upload everything at once i think that's really irresponsible i think that's that doesn't make sense however if you do have a mixtape if you do have a a single 
upload that to the streaming websites get the buzz out that way so that when it comes to to time to where you get to release your extended play or your lp um you actually have a buzz coming into it you know what i mean because these these were the mediums that people used to gear album sales big stapes or a single so you can use you use that same model um that still shows your your control within the industry i do understand how hard this can be if you're signed to a label who is an affiliate of the two big companies that are basically giving permission to spotify to exist which is warner and um, universal so if you're part of that label that or any or under any of the umbrella umbrella it's gonna be incredibly incredibly difficult i'm not gonna front it's gonna be very very difficult to um try and release how you want to release but if you're not i think you should take advantage of it and just go on a mixtape run go on a singles run um whatever it might be to build a buzz go on that and once you build that buzz you then get off it and then you make your album or your ep and then you release it through um sites like Bandcamp, um or you can release the physical copy uh to be sold that way at least you 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 are making your bread you have done the legwork in regards and you can still get paid for the for the legwork you've done because if you're releasing a mixtape you still get paid for those streams what i'm trying to say is that you don't have to lose and lose all your control or your power in this you don't have to give everything you have away you can actually multiply it to your favor but let me know what you think in the comment section below did you um have you are you still on spotify have you left spotify uh what are your thoughts on spotify you know like you know just let me know what you think in the comments below and let's talk about this all right it's your boy t-cell and i am out peace